Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Crochet Comfort Shawl. This is a relatively easy shawl and I'm going to take you through start to finish of making this project together. But first, let's listen to this real quick. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So today we have a pattern and it's actually relatively simple up until you get to the base area here. There's some beautiful stitch work that goes on down here and there's a matter of repeating the number of uh, rows in order to get the look. One of these things about this particular af or this particular shawl is that you have to watch your stitch count. So because the base is a really unique stitch down here you have to watch and make sure that you nail it on the right row in order to get it to go. So you just can't make this particular area any size you wish. So let me take you a little bit through the other part of this pattern right here. So here's what it looks like. So here's the middle right here and it extends as a triangle and you're going to notice that there is ladder work that you can see on her back. So let me just uh, get that other photo up here for you. So do you see that it's got ladders here? So there's one here, two, three, four, and five. So there's five of these ladder pieces that you see and you want to count those as you're going this, uh, doing this project. So you see it one and two and three and four and then you see the fifth one. So the fifth one has the secondary color if you wish. So I'm using these ladders as for myself in order for myself to make sure that I, I get it to the right size that I need because you see the fabulous stitch work down here. It relies on this last row that you see in the lighter blue to be the right stitch count in order to make that happen. So it's one of those ones you have to pay attention to your stitch counts. So we're gonna start off in the top area right here. We're gonna use a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. We're gonna use some Karen Simply Soft in order to make this. So it's actually really not a hard pattern to be able to follow and then we're gonna take you through line by line down here at the base. So I'll get you started here, leave that with you and then bring you a row, uh, line by line as we go down through here. To make it easier there's also a crochet diagram that you'll see the amount of uh, stitch work that you see. So you can see it starts off in the center of her back and then it extends outward as we get bigger and bigger. So there's two rows of solid uh, trebles and then there's one row of this like ladder work. It's treble work, chain one, treble, chain one and so on. You will notice that right in the center line right here as you're doing this they're always gonna be two trebles, chain two, two trebles right in the center and it's actually really easy once you get that to go. So the things that you need to pay attention to is especially when you're in the ladder work is that the one right before the, the edge right or the, before the corner is left empty and you just have to watch those and those will give you good indications if you're going off the trail and uh, for example if you're doing um, treble chain one, treble chain one and you end up right on the one right before this particular corner then you know something's wrong and I did that and I accidentally skipped a stitch somewhere on the row below. So that was enabled, I was able to find my mistake. So the key is to kind of watch your stitch counts as you go because it matters when you go to do this edging that you see right here that is really quite stunning. So without further ado let's grab our crochet hook and yarn and I'm gonna get you and take, uh, show you what to do here and then I'm gonna leave that for you and then we'll I carry on through the base. For today's tutorial I'm going to keep the colors that are being changed consistent with the pattern but I'm just using different colors and so where I change the color in the pattern it will also change for you as well. So we're going to start off with the slip knot right in the very starting and insert your five millimeter size H crochet hook. So to begin we need to chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four and insert the hook into the beginning chain just like so and then yarning over pulling it through everything and you create the center of the back of the shawl. Let's move along to row number one. To begin row number one it's always going to be the same when it's row number one and just watch how we're going to do this because we need to establish the triangle right off the bat. So we're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four and that counts as one treble. We're now gonna treble five times into the center of that ring. So just wrap the hook twice to treble and going into the center of the ring and then pull through and then pull through two and two and two all the way back to the top and treble again and you want a total of five trebles all together. So when you add that chaining of four that you started with that will give you a total of six trebles when you're done. Okay so you, that's just as a helpful tip in order for you to stay balanced. So right now I have five trebles that I've just created. So with this chain of four that counts as one of them. So there's technically five and I'm gonna treble one more time. 
So as I stated in the preview is that whenever there's a corner, okay, the corner piece at the end, there's always gonna be chain two. So that's an easy one to remember. And we're gonna come down in the center. See how I'm just wrapping this starting yarn around as if it's part of the ring, then can get lost. So now you're going to travel back into that ring a total of six times. So that makes it equivalent on both sides. Just like that. Just keeping an eye on my counts. It's really important because you're right in the start to get it right the first time. So now I have my six trebles here. So if I'm looking at it like I would be from the pattern, this is what it looks like at this point. So with the chaining of four plus the other five that gives you six and then you have six down the other side. Let's turn this now and we're going to go now in row number two. So regardless if it's row number two all the way until we get to the um, really fancy work at the edge, uh, edge of this project, every one time that you go to start one of these, there will always be three trebles into the same one. So the chaining of three, uh, four to start is considered one. You'll treble two more times to give you a total of three. And then when you get to the other side, there will be a total of three trebles in that one too. So that's kind of what we're looking at. So let's uh, start off and we're going to chain total of four. So one, two, three and four that counts as a treble and into the same stitch right underneath I want you to treble two more times. Okay so that allows it to stay uh, going out as a triangle. So now you're gonna put one treble in each one of the trebles that you have left. So let's do that. You notice I'm not counting her at all. I'm just relying on my stitch work to be accurate. So it's not something that you have to overly count. So you go right into that last one and then you have your chain two space. So in the chain two space, whenever it's this a kind of row or it's the one with the ladder work in it with the, the trebles and chain ones, you're always gonna put in two trebles first followed by chain two and two trebles once again. Now you're gonna go down the other side. So each one of these trebles are gonna have one treble except for the very last one that's gonna have a total of three. So let's just do that for row number two. So as we get bigger in this, I'm not gonna take you through the entire row. I'm get, just gonna kick you off and get you started, tell you what to do, and then we'll meet you at the end of each one of the rows that we do it at. So remember the very final one is right here. It's in the turning chain. So go right into a chain, not to the space itself. Go right into a chain and you wanna put in your three trebles into that same stitch there so that you can maintain the balance of this project. So this is row number two. So you see it's nice and solid. Just like that. Okay so let's turn our work and go for row number three. And the easy way to remember this pattern there's two trebles that are solid. So two rows that are solid and then it's gonna be a ladder. So then two solids and then a ladder. So it just uh, kind of makes sense. So right now we have our two solids in and now we're gonna create the ladder work. So as I mentioned before every time we start a row uh, it's gonna be chaining of four and then two more trebles into the same one. So that counts as three trebles all within the, the side there within the first stitch. So now we're gonna start and we're gonna create our chain one. So we're gonna chain one first, skip one and then treble into the next. And you're gonna do that all the way to the point. So chain one, skip one, treble into the next. Chain one, skip one, treble into the next chain one, skip one, treble into the next. So as I mentioned in the preview, so you're gonna have one that's left over that you're not gonna worry about before you get to an edge. So don't worry about that one. So you chain up one and then you're just gonna go right into the corner of the chain two and put in two more trebles first. Chain two and two more trebles all within that chain two space. So now you're physically turning. So when you start down this side, don't start on the very first treble. You want to chain one first, 
skip the first treble and go to the second and treble again. Okay, so then chain one, skip one and treble into the next. Chain one, skip one, treble into the next. Chain one, skip one, treble into the next. So right where I am right now is that I have two stitches left, one and two. So I'm gonna chain one and I'm skipping this one and going right into the last into the turning chain and I'm gonna put in three trebles there. So this was a row number three. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna get you started on row number four and just to let you know where things are and then you can do all of this because it's a matter of repeating this pattern over and over. So let's turn our work and go for row number four. So row number four is a solid just like you had done already before. So what are we gonna do to start? You know the answer, it's chaining a four. So one, two, three and four and you're gonna treble two more times into that same one to keep that triangle growing out. Like so. So now we have to fill in these uh, particular spaces. So you wanna watch these chain one spaces. So you remember that you have three when you started so there's no chain one spaces there and then it starts. So the first two are gonna be one treble in each. Okay. And then the next one is a chain one space. So you're gonna fill that chain one space in. And then the next one has a treble as you can see right below it and then the next one is a chain one space. So you see what you're doing? You're just filling in the stitches as you're going across. So that's so chain one space, the next one's into a treble and so forth. So you're gonna do that all the way to the point and in the point you're gonna put in two trebles, chain two, two trebles and then you're gonna move down and just fill them all in including the chain one spaces right into the very end. So what I'll do is that uh, I'll leave that with you and so you can get that done and maybe at the end of this row. So as you come to the end of the row remember everything is getting a treble including that final turning chain which is the next one right here. Don't, don't forget that one and you're gonna put in your total of three trebles into that same one so that you can bring balance to your project. And that was the conclusion of row number four. So now we're gonna turn and remember what we're looking for is that you were looking for two solids, so one and two and then you have a ladder. So then there's a solid here, so the next one has to be solid and then a ladder again. So I'm just referring to it as a ladder because that's what it reminds me of. So row number five, chaining at three, uh, four and then we put two more trebles into that same starting to keep the balance. And then every one of the trebles is going to get one treble and then in the corner what are you gonna do? Right, you're gonna do two trebles, chain two, two trebles and then treble each one of the, all the way to the end and the very last one will have two or three trebles right in the very end. I'm gonna leave that for you. This is row number five. So I'm coming to the end of row number five. It's a solid row and then the very last one remember it's gonna have three trebles into the turning chain. So don't forget to do that to keep your balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to levels number six to row six. Let's turn our work. So just remember that you have to have two solids. So one and two, ladder, one and two and now this is a ladder. So it's always gonna be two solids and then a ladder and etc. So I'm going to show you the ladder one more time just to make sure that you got it right and you're going to chain up a total of four and then you're going to treble a total of two more times into the same one. So that gives you a total count of three. So remember the ladder. So you chain one, skip one and treble into the next and you do that all the way to the point. So chain one, skip one. So when I, I'm just gonna do this and talk to you while I'm making my way to the point. So when I was doing the trial the other night or last night I uh, realized that I had screwed up because my ladder did not end up in the right spot. And in fact this is take two. I had done the same mistake twice and it's just because I'm half paying attention I think. So it's one of those areas where if you're screwing up in your counts this is where you're gonna notice it on this row. And how will you notice it? I will show you that in just a moment.
but I'm just making my way to the point. You notice that I'm not counting any stitches. I'm just letting the visuals do the work. So this is actually take two. What I did is on the last uh, take that when I did this in row number five I forgot to put my chain two right in the corner here. So it looked like it was all solid. So do you see where I am right now? I'm in the stitch right previous to or like the second last one previous to the point. So that no, I know them right. So last night I ended up right in the same stitch as the last one when I was doing this and I realized that I had missed a stitch in the row below causing that. So just watch that. So chain up one and then go into the point for two trebles. Chain two and two trebles once again to make that turn. And then you're gonna move your way down the other side. So chain up one, skip one and treble into the next. So I won't uh, drag you any further on this one here and I'll see at the end of this row. So chain up one, skip one and treble in the next and I'll see at the end of this row. So currently you're just finishing up row number six. And so row number six is just going to um, just wanna watch that uh, as you're going all the way because we have to make sure that our counts are right and for the remaining of the amount of rows that we need. So I'm gonna take you to the diagram of what we're gonna do next. And so you just have to repeat this last two rows. So just do solids again and then a ladder and solids again and a ladder. So you're on number six right now. So you have to go to all the way to row number 14. So just think two solids and then um, a ladder, two solids and then a ladder. And then what we're going to do is that we need to change colors and do two rows of a new color in order to get it. So let me take you to the pattern and show you where you're gonna go and you already know the stitch work now. So now it's a matter of just getting it right. So looking at the picture of the shawl lying down. So you've done the beginning and now we're on row number six. So it's the ladder work that is right in here. This is where we are. So what you have to just do is do two more solids and then a ladder. Two more solids again and then a ladder and then two more solids and then this color is done. So the, all you're just gonna do is fasten off that color and do the same stitch work again for two rows. One is a ladder and one is a solid of using a different color right here. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna let you get to there and then we're gonna pick up. So make sure you do all of this first. Use this uh, picture as a guide for yourself to make sure that you follow it. I wasn't sure myself so I wanted just a verification of it laying down so I can see it. So remember you're right here. Right, you just did the ladders. So you're doing two solids and a ladder, two solids and a ladder, two solids and then you're changing color and then do a ladder and, and then a solid. So you're just keeping in balance. So when I come back we're gonna start this area down here uh, right where it gets all really fancy and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So here we are on the diagram and we're now going to start and do all this fancy footwork. So right now we're ending on row number 16. This is the second color of the solid that is already done. Okay, so just think about it. This is already done. It's just there as a guide. And then we're going to do number 17 together. Okay, and we're just gonna do 17 together and then we're going to then move across and then start doing the fancy footwork. But before we do 17, we have to change that color first to the outside color and then we're gonna go across and you can see that it's one double crochet in each except for the, the very corners and I'll cover that next. And so I'll see you here in just a moment. So just to recap on where you are right now, we finished off row number six already before together. Then we did two solids and then a ladder, two solids and then a ladder, two solids and then we changed color and we did a ladder and then we did one solid. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up on the edge now. We're gonna change our color and we're gonna do that fancy outside edging right here, right now. So I'm gonna start a new color and just gonna create a slip knot just for extra security and insert my hook in and I'm gonna come to the outside of the first treble that's here and then I'm gonna join it to the top. I'm gonna let this straggler stay down on top of the line so I can trap it underneath. So I'm going to just attach with the slip stitch and then I'm going to chain a total of three. So one, two, three. It counts as a double crochet. Before we've always been doing fours. This time it's three. And then you're gonna put in two double crochets into the same one. So you have a total of three if you count the, th uh, the three chains as one. So now all you're just gonna do is move your way down the line or sorry I've been uh, just double crochet and move your way down the line. It might get a little bit of a hard thing for you to start uh, double crocheting once again because you've been wrapping as a treble and uh, you're just gonna double crochet and then I'll meet you at the first corner and I'll show you what to do. 
So as you make your way to the corner, this is the point right down in the lower back of the person and you are going to just double crochet in each of the trebles and then in the, in the chain two space you are going to double crochet twice, once and twice and then chain two and then double crochet two more times into that same one and then all you are just gonna do is make your way back down the other side and just one double crochet in each treble and the very final one that you want to do in the turning chain make sure you put in three double crochets and I'm gonna leave that for you and this is row number 17 and when I come back we're gonna review the chart and get you started and we're now gonna start getting a little more complicated. Okay so here we are in the project we're about to start row number 18 and I'm gonna take you a bit now to the pattern to show you what to do and then we're gonna cover that and we're just gonna carefully go through the rest of this uh, child together piece by piece. So let's start row number 18. We're technically gonna come from the other side and work our way back. So it's typical to see instructions like this. So you see that it's a double crochet leaning over and you see that there's a total of, of two chains. So if I'm just considering to go on the other side this is a considered chaining of five. So we're gonna chain five and then we're going to then double crochet in each of the next seven, skip two, chain two and cluster into the next one skip two, chain two and crochet, uh, double crochet into the next seven and we keep doing that up until we get to near to the point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you started here and then I'm gonna meet you at the point and we're gonna review that and then get you started again just there. So let's do row number 18 together. So row number 18 let's begin. We're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, there's your double crochet, four, five is your chain two. It doesn't look like it right now but it will. In the very next stitch I want you to double crochet into that one plus six more in the row. So that's one. Let's count it together. And we're gonna do two and three, four and five, six and seven. Now we're going to chain two and then skip two chains down here so one and two and I want you to cluster into the third one. So wrap that hook going in, pull through, pull through two and hold and do it again. So wrap into the same one, pull through, pull through two and hold and then wrap and going into the same one, pull through, pull through two and hold and now you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all four. And now I want you to chain two again. So one and two and now I want you to skip two, one and two and I want you to double crochet the next seven. So we're just gonna keep repeating this idea all the way until we get to the point and then we'll just uh, do something slightly different there and then we'll do the same thing going down the other side. So how many double crochets in a row did we need? We needed a total of seven. So that's your secret number for this one. Okay so you got six and seven, chain two, skip two and cluster into the third one. Once you get used to these clusters they don't take a lot of time and then chain two, skip two and then double crochet in the next seven. Please do that all the way till you get closest to the point. I'll see you there in just a moment. So now coming all the way to the point I just got my seven in here as you can see and now we're ready to turn the corner for the point. So to do that we're going to chain up two and you're gonna notice that you have two stitches left over here in the double crochet. You're gonna skip right over top of those and then you're going to cluster right into the chain two space. So cluster again so get your in there, get that section in and then pull through all of the loops and then you just have to chain one and then cluster again. Sorry, it's just one wrap only, sorry. I've been doing so much trouble with this whole one thing. I've got that in my mind and so I do another treble or sorry another cluster and then chain one and then I cluster once again. So there's a total of three clusters all within this and now we're gonna move down the other side of this, sh of this shawl. So you're going to chain two, skip the first two and then go to the third and double crochet seven in a row and then you know what to do. So seven in a row, skip two, cluster into the next, skip two and then seven in a row. So please do that all the way uh, down the other side for row number 18. So I'm coming up to the end of row number 18 
and I've got my seven double crochets in a row and you're thinking you're gonna run out of stitches but you're not. It's all good so don't panic. And so I have a total of six in there. I have two more yet to go. So I'm gonna double crochet into the next one. It gives me my seven and I have one last one to go and that's awesome. So I want to chain two first and then double crochet right into the very final turning chain. So that was like your chain five that you had started with in the very beginning. So let's uh, move on to row number 19. Let's bring you back to the diagram. Show you what's going on next. So we're gonna start row number 19 and we're gonna chain up a total of three. It doesn't really count as anything. And then we're gonna cluster right into the, the starting double crochet that we had before. Chain two and cluster right back and again and then chain two. But what I want you to watch out for is these double crochets here. They're not actually in a stitch. They're in a space between the stitch. You see how they're lined up perfectly in the rows below? That means that they're right into the stitch but they're not lined up here. That means that we're going into the space and I did read the pattern to confirm that. So there's a total of six in the spaces, chain two and then you're going to cluster into this other cluster, chain two and then cluster once again here and then chain two and then this area right here is right into the spaces once again and there's a total of six and you carry on. So let's try row number 19 and then we'll get you to closest to the corner and then pick you up again from that point. So let's begin and we're going to chain three. So one, two and three doesn't really count as anything. It's just a builder and then we're going to cluster into that same stitch right below. So just do your cluster as you normally do it. With the th three times pull through all four loops and you're going to chain two and then cluster once again into that same stitch. through all loops and now you're going to chain two and you're gonna come now to the seven that you see. So you're not gonna go into the seven stitches. You're gonna go right in between the space. So go right in between the first one and the second and you're going to double crochet right into the space itself and then move to the next one. Go right into the space. You're doing a total of six of these in a row. You rarely see this in a pattern. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist but it's really awesome. Uh, to say the least. So you're doing a total of right between the spaces. So there's only six that you see there and now we're gonna start up again uh, doing cluster work. So we're gonna chain two and then you're going to go right in the top of the cluster and cluster once again. And as you get your cluster done chain two and then cluster once again into that same one. So you're kind of making one cluster turn into two in this row. Then chain two and then start up again. So you have your seven in a row and start in the very beginning space. Okay, so right the, after the first one but before the second and double crochet six in a row. So that's all you're gonna do for row number 19 and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna get you to do this and we'll meet back up at the point and show you what to do there and then we'll carry on for that. So if you just recall you're just going in between the spaces and now that you're done that chain two you're gonna cluster, chain two, cluster again, chain two and then do it again in between the spaces. So I'll see you at the point at this particular spot. So row number 19 we're now heading to the point as you can see and now there's six, uh, three clusters here. Now we're gonna make them into six clusters this time around. So I'm now in the spaces in between with the six and now I'm gonna chain two to before I begin the corner. So in the first cluster I want to do a total of one cluster so far. So just do that. I'll just walk you through it. And then chain two and then do another cluster into the same one. So what we're gonna do is that each one of these clusters in the corner we're gonna convert into two this time. So once you get the second one done chain two and then move to the next cluster and do a cluster and then chain two and then a cluster into the same one. So here comes my second cluster for that middle one. I have never done a project like this by the way just so you know. This is kinda neat. It's ni nice to do something different. So chaining of two and then I'm gonna cluster finally into the third one and I'm gonna then chain two and then do another cluster. Make sure you chain two between them. That will keep it nice and open for you. I'm still doing this trouble wrapping. I don't know what my problem is. Okay, so continuing that 
and then chain two and now you're gonna start again. So there's your seven. So you're just gonna start immediately after you've done your chain two and just double crochet in the spaces again. Again only six times in a row and then you're chaining two and then your next cluster then will be um, a cluster, chain two cluster into the same one. So please do that all the way to the other side and I'll see you over there in just a moment. So let's finish up row number 19 together and just make my way and I'm just in between the stitches. Here on the end there should only be six and here it is. I can see that there there's only six and now in order to finish this I need to chain two and on the outside one here I want to go the third stitch up and I want to go right into that actual turning chain and I want to put in a cluster. So one, so I just wrap my hook and make it my cluster. Pull through, chain two and cluster all into the same one. And then that concludes off row number 19. Okay and then just that's it. So what I want to do then at this particular point is that I'm going to uh, just turn my work and we're gonna move up to row number 20 together and this is exactly where we are at this point. So let's bring back that chart and let's see what we're gonna get ourselves into this time. So in row number 20 we're gonna immediately start up and this double crochet counts as three chains and then three so we're gonna chain a total of six. We're starting in the other side and we're coming back so just so you know. So right in the chain two space we want a cluster and then chain two and then cluster and then we're gonna chain three and then immediately go in between the spaces again for five in a row and then chain three and then in the chain two space we're gonna do a cluster, chain two, cluster, chain three and so on. So let's start on row number 20. So let's begin row number 20. We're gonna chain a total of six. So one, two, three, that's your double crochet and four, five, six, that's your uh, three chains that you need. So you're just gonna immediately just jump in between the two clusters. Just pull them apart if you can't, if you don't see it already and you're going to cluster one time. So just do one cluster and then a total of chain two and then cluster once again. So you're doing that right between the other two clusters in the row below like so. So now you're gonna chain three and now you're gonna just look and you have six that you can see go right in between the space after the first one and just double crochet for that one plus four more so it gives you a total of five in a row. You really can't go wrong and miss that if you're keeping your counts because honestly after you get this one done that right now you can see that there's no others that exist and there's only a total of five. So chain three, so one, two, three and then you're gonna go right in between the other two clusters that are there and you're gonna cluster Okay, and then chain two and cluster once again. Okay, and then chain three. So one, two, three, and then go along. So you see your next six down there. So just go in between, and so you can only do five in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, and five. So that's all you need to do to go across on row number 20. So then just chain three, cluster, chain two, cluster into the next one, then chain three and then begin again. I'll see you at the point on row number 20. So we're now hitting the point. So I've just chained my three. So I've just done my five here and I've chained three and now we're gonna do some cluster work but we've gotta turn the corner at the same time. So we're gonna go in between the first two clusters. Okay, so we're gonna go right in between there and we are going to cluster chain two and cluster once again. So we're doing that right in between the other two that already exist. And now you want to start turning the corner. So you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. So and then come into the next uh, group of two. Do you see that? Go right into the middle one. That's the middle of the group of two and I want you to cluster again there and then chain two and cluster once again in that same spot. Once you got that done chain three. So one, two, three and now you got your final uh, set of clusters that, uh, that are in the corner and you're gonna cluster again. Chain two to separate them and go back into the same spot and cluster once again. 
Okay, so that's it. So your corner is done. You've just successfully turned. So you're gonna chain three to begin again. And so you're just gonna come and you're gonna go right in between the spaces. You see the six that are there. Double crochet in between the first and the second one. Right into the space. Just like that and then chain three and then cluster, chain two, cluster, then chain three and then go right into the space again. So this is row number 20. I continue to do it and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming to the end of row number 20. So I just want to chain three and then I'm going right in there and I'm going right in between the two clusters and I'm gonna cluster again. Okay and then I'm chaining two, one and two and then I'm clustering once again. But we're not quite done this time. Last time we finished on a cluster, this time we're not. We're gonna chain three, so one, two, and three, and right in the uh, top of this section right here, okay, we're going to put in a double crochet. So that brings it back into balance, just like you see. So this is row number 20. So let's move along to 21. So let's move along to 21. We're gonna start immediately and we're gonna chain a total of seven and then we're going to cluster into the first one, chain two and cluster again. It's right in between and then we're gonna chain four and then fill in the, the spots. There's only uh, four double crochets this time. Chain four, cluster, chain two, cluster and then chain four and then fill it in. Let's move along to row number 21. So let's move along to number 21. We're gonna chain a total of seven. So one, two, three, and that's your double crochet, four, five, six, and seven, and that's your chain four space. So you're just gonna immediately go right into the first, uh, between the two first clusters, and you're gonna cluster in. And then you're gonna chain two, and then cluster once again. and then pull through it there and now this time we're gonna chain four. So one, two, three and four and we're immediately just looking here. You can only go in the spaces. This means that there's only gonna be four left this time. So right in between the space, double crochet and keep doing that until you run out of space really. And there you go. All the spaces are now used and chain four. So one, two, three, four and then cluster in between the next clusters. Chain two, cluster again. And now we're ready again. So chain four. So one, two, three and four. Come in between the next spaces that you see. There's only four there and just double crochet. So please do all this uh, to the point and I'll see you there in just a moment. So now I'm making my way to the point right here and I've just done my four in a row here. So chain four. So one, two, three and four. So come to the first one of the corner and you're gonna put in a cluster followed by a chain two and then cluster once again. Okay and now that your cluster is done chain four. So one, two, three and four and then just come to the next one. So this is the middle one of the, of the group of three. Go and cluster in between the first of that group there. Then chain two and cluster once again. And then chain four. So one, two, three and four and then go right into the next group of uh, between the next group of clusters and cluster again. Chain two and cluster again. In the next row we're gonna start really expanding on these things uh, but we're not quite there yet. So now that you have your corner now completely done we're now going to move around. So chain four. So one, two, three and four and then just go in between the spaces again. There's only four this time of double crochet. So you can either count it if you're comp if you're not confident but if you're confident like me you just gotta fill in the space 
and then once you have that done, there's only four there, chain four, so one, two, three and four and then just cluster in between the next group. Followed by chain two and cluster once again. And then chain four and then start again with the double crochets. Please do that and this is gonna be the conclusion of row number 21. So coming up to the conclusion of row number 21, I'm chaining four and then I'm just going right in between the last two clusters here and I'm putting on a cluster. Okay and then chain two and then cluster once again but we're not quite done yet. So before we do that we have to chain four. So one, two, three and four and then what we just want to do is that we looking at all of these stitches here we need to make sure that we go into the third stitch. So one, two and three and you're gonna double crochet in that into position just like so. So it should look like that. Okay, so let's move along to row number 22. So row number 22 we're going to start up and we're going to chain three and then we're gonna double crochet into the same one. We're actually coming from the other direction up and that's what it, that's what that double crochet means. So chain up three, double crochet into the same one and then chain three and then in between the next two, the next clusters we're gonna cluster, chain two, cluster, chain two and then cluster once again and then chain three and then fill in the space. There's only three this time and then chain three and then in between the next uh, clusters it's cluster, chain two, cluster, chain two and cluster once again then chain three and fill in the spaces. Let's do this for number 22. This is the third last row of this whole project. So let's start row number 22. We're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and in the same one that you're in you want to double crochet one more time. So there's a total of two and now you're gonna chain three. So one, two and three. So here's your clusters. Just make sure you separate them so that you can easily see them and you're going to cluster one time in there so far. So this time you're gonna make three clusters total. So chain two, cluster once again and normally we've just been putting two clusters into each space but not this time. And you're gonna chain two and then cluster once again. So each one of these spaces will have three clusters into them and that includes the corners as well. So chain, pull through all of them. So then let's begin again. So chain up three and let's move along. So you're going to go in between the spaces. There's only three this time for a double crochet. So you're running out of those stitches there but you're making up for these um, clusters that are now expanding. So chain three and now in between this one here just like you would all the way across. So cluster, chain two, cluster, chain two, cluster and then chain three and then fill in the spaces. Please do this all the way for row number 22. We'll see you at the first corner. So let's cover how to uh, do the corner. So I just did my filling in of three, chaining of three and now I'm pretty sure that you understand this pattern by now. So what I'm gonna just tell you the instructions. So in between the first two clusters Okay, you're going to cluster, chain two, cluster, chain two, cluster and then you're gonna chain three again and then do the same thing here. So let me just do the first one just to make sure you get it. So we're gonna cluster and then chain two and then cluster once again. So we're converting all of these clusters down into groups of three and then chain two and then cluster once again. Okay and to move on you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and then do the same thing into the next uh, group right over here. So just going in. So do this uh, for your corner and then I'll just uh, pick you back up at the, uh, I might as well just stick it out here. I'll just uh, carry on with you. Sometimes it's just faster to do it than it is to turn off the camera. Okay, so I'm just doing my clusters, then chain three and then moving across. Okay, so I go to the next one. Chain two, cluster again. So I'm just going at my regular speed because I think you actually understand the pattern by now. Okay, 
I, again I've never done a project like this. So once you get that group done chain three. So one, two, three and then move across then just filling in the between the double crochet. There's only three in a row and then again you'll be into your clusters once again right after this. So before you begin that chain three. So the clusters again cluster, chain two, cluster, chain two, cluster and then keep on moving. So this will be the conclusion uh, and I'll see you at the end of row number 22. So I'm coming up to the end of row number 22 and again the last cluster you're gonna make it into three this time. I think if anything that's gonna slow you down in this particular pattern is the whole idea of doing these clusters. But I honestly I think that's what uh, makes it really quite interesting as well. So we're just making them into threes this time around and then watch what we're going to do then for the end. Once you get the last one in chain four or sorry chain three. So one, two and three and in the third chain up from here. So count it. So one, two and three. I want you to double crochet two times. So go right into the actual chain itself not to an actual gap and double crochet two times into there to bring off uh, row number 22. So let's turn our work and let's move on to row number 23 second last row. So let's move along to row number 23. We're going to chain up a three which counts as a double crochet and then double crochet into the same one. Chain up three and now what we're going to do is split these three and we're gonna go cluster, chain two, cluster into the first split, chain two and then come to the other side and split it. So uh, cluster, chain two and cluster and then chain three and then just fill this in in the middle and again we're just gonna split these clusters off for row number 23. Let's begin to do that next. So let's begin to do row number 23. We're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and we're gonna double crochet into the same one right underneath. So then you have apparent, apparently two. So we're gonna chain up three and now we're going to come to these group of three clusters that you have and you're gonna go in between the first and the second one and you're going to cluster and then chain two and then cluster once again right into that same spot. Once you get that done then you're going to chain two and then just jump to the other space. So here's the middle cluster, here's the last one. So just go into this one here and you're going to cluster again. chain two and then cluster once again in there. So you're really getting into four clusters at this particular point and it's being split between the two gapping spaces. And then once you get that done then you're ready to move on and you're going to chain three and then you're just gonna fill the spaces in of the double crochet. There's only two left this time. And then chain three and then moving on you have three that are here to put a cluster here, chain two, cluster and then chain two and then go to the other side, cluster, chain two and cluster and then chain three and then begin again moving across. So please do that. I'll see you at the point. So we're now heading to the corner just like you see. So we're gonna divide off each one again into two. So like we did before how we split them up like this and that there's two we're doing the same thing over in the corner for each one of these. So the, let's chain up three which I've already done and I'm coming in between the first two clusters and I'm gonna cluster and then chain two and then cluster once again into the same one. Okay and now we're gonna chain two and now cluster into the next one right beside it and you're gonna divide that one again. Okay so chain two and then cluster once again. So now you got four clusters working together for that one section and now you're ready to move on to the next one here. So to get there first you have to chain three. So one, two and three and again cluster uh, two chains and cluster and then move, up, move along and fill them in. So I'll see you at the end of this point and then we'll just carry on from this point here. So I just finished the corner as you see here. Now I'm ready to move on. I've chained three and then I'm just gonna put my double crochets in between the spaces. There's only two this time like there was before. Chain three 
and then this here clusters that you see there's three here you're gonna divide those. So cluster, chain two, cluster, then chain two and then do the same thing. Cluster, chain two and cluster, then chain three and keep on moving down. So please do this all the way to row number 23 I'll see at the end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end of round number or row number 23 and I'm just uh, did my last set of clusters and I'm chaining three and then right at the very top of the turning chain I'm going to put in two double crochets to finish like so. So we've got only one more row to go. We're gonna go labor intensive on the clusters to give this the final look that it deserves and you can see it looks really quite amazing. So let's begin row number 24 next. Row number 24 is gonna start up and we're gonna chain a total of three but look what we're gonna do with these clusters. So the first between the two group it's gonna be cluster, chain two, cluster, then chain two and there's gonna be lots of chain twos in between these and then in the space between these two here you are going to put in three clusters that are separated by chain two, chain two again and then right in this section is two clusters again that separated with the chain two and then you're just gonna immediately once you get that last cluster just double crochet right in the space in between and then start it again. So you can see we're just filling these all up and you're actually doing the whole thing all the way across including the corners. It's the exact same thing as you go across. The only difference on the corner is that there is a chain two when you're separating those out in order to keep the bend. So you're not doing your chain twos uh, in this section here because there is no um, because there's a double crochet here but there isn't here. So make sure you watch for that as you go all the way around. So let me just make sure that you're getting that and let's go on to row number 24 and finalize for today. So let's begin. We're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and we're immediately gonna come to where the clusters are and go right in between the first and the second one and you're going to cluster once in and then chain two and then cluster once again into that same one. Okay, you got that done. So now chain two. So this is gonna be come into the next space between the next two. So it's kinda like the middle one of the group. That's why it's gonna have three clusters this time. So start with a cluster and then chain two and then cluster once again. So this is kinda the middle one of the, of the, of them all and then chain two and then cluster one more time. So this middle one will have three clusters. And now you're gonna move on. So you're gonna chain two and then you just come between the next group that you see here and you're gonna cluster first. Chain two and then cluster. Okay, so once you get that last cluster in, normally what we've been doing is that we've been adding chains but we're not going to. We're just gonna immediately stretch right over and we're gonna double crochet in between that other one that's already there. So that'll pull it nice and over for you so you have a nice finished look. So this is the final row. So you're just gonna restart again. So you're just gonna go in between the first two clusters and put in two clusters that are separated by chain two. You're gonna go into the middle one and you're gonna put three in there that are separated by chain two and then come to the next one here. There's gonna be two in there separated by chain two and then you're just gonna reach over and double crochet right into here. So please do that and I'll meet you at the corner in just a moment. So I'm currently working uh, almost closest to the corner and I'm just doing everything as, as you already know it across. And so I'm in the first section of the corner here and I wanna show you the difference between this corner or these uh, clusters and the rest of them. So I'm just finalizing the final cluster in for this grouping. Okay. So what we had here is that we have the first section coming in and before we've been leaning over and just double crocheting in and then immediately starting the next one. But because there's a corner and there's no double crochet here we just have to chain two. Okay and immediately start then again this grouping of uh, over here in the corner. So in the corners here we don't worry about that double crochet that we have to lean over towards. We just have to keep just spacing everything by just chaining of two. So please do this all the way and uh, we're gonna carry on in this uh, one. This is the final round and I bet you'll be glad to get uh, this done as well because it's now starting to look amazing. So I'll be back in just a moment. 
So as I finish off this final corner, this is the last time I'm going through, I'm now back to where this double crochets are. I just finished this last section of the clusters. So I just lean over and just double crochet in the middle and then restart and work my way down the, uh, the other side. So please do that and I'll save the end of this round, round number 24 which is the final round for the show. So I'm coming up to the end of row number 24 which is the final and I'm just doing my last set of clusters. <laughs> if I don't do any more clusters for a while I'll be okay with that. So I got my last set of clusters in and I'm just gonna lean over and into the top of the turning chain. It is gonna be uh, a double crochet and I am done. So that's all I need to do. So in order to get rid of this loose end all you're just gonna do, let me just show you to do that. Might as well <laughs> put all this work into it. So just pull through and I'm just gonna throw that yarn through my darning needle. So of course if you're gonna wear this you don't want your loose ends hanging out everywhere either. So you just want to make sure that you just glide it through the stitch work. Okay just kind of up underneath just about an inch or so. Glide it up underneath and pull through. Don't provide too much tension to it and then go back in the other direction for two and then go back in the other direction for three. So third time is a charm. So coming all the way across, let it go and then just use your scissors and trim. So that's how you do this and this is a really neat uh, shawl. This was a labored tetsif here in this area but I think it turned out really good. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye. <laughs>